Guess what's coming up on March 11th, Jimmy? Mm, I don't know. What's coming up March 11th? Best conference of the year. The way the best conference best of the year. Best conference of the year. I know people Better might than think... TGC. Oh, <laughs> come on. Better than the SBC. Well, that's not a hard one. Okay, better than, better than G3? Oh, come on. Listen, man. All better those, than League Nier? Those are some hacky conferences, man. We, better than we, For the Church? Uh, yeah, yeah. For the Church. No, 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 no. Uh, for the Church is doing great stuff out there. Okay, For the Church is good, but mm-hmm. it, it is not confessional piety with Jim the Man Renahan. It's not that. Yeah. Jim Renahan? Mm-hmm. Confessional piety, free books, all that stuff, cheap registration, it Joe Fo. And Jofo. You get the Jofo. And afterwards, maybe if you want, we head on over to Levita and uh, have a cigar. Yeah, we're going to rent out the back room. You guys need to register for the Confessional Piety yep. Conference. It's happening in St. Charles, Illinois on March 11th. It's coming up. First 200 to register. You get free. And we get books. close to that. You get, um, well, see, they got a journal, a custom journal, so you can yep. keep notes and everything. It's going to be a really good time. It's going to be a special conference. It's the very first one that we're doing for Doctrine and Devotion. And yeah. I can say, yeah, it probably could be the last one. Uh, I think there's already a second one planned for somewhere else later this year. Hmm. Mm. We'll talk about that later. But we've already uh, talked about it. What are you talking but about? But most of you guys ain't going to be able to go. Yeah, you can't go to that. It we've already, we've it already won't talked be about in it. this hemisphere. Is that the word? Yeah. All yeah, right. it'll be. New Zealand. All right. So uh, get on that. You can go to doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference for more. Welcome to Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast that is being recorded next to a very loud room with children and other people. You hear all that over there? Yeah, I can hear it. It's loud. Mm-hmm. Those people are loud. I don't, and who are you? Oh, uh, my name is Jimmy Fowler. I am the perpetual elder candidate at Redeemer Fellowship. And my you know name funny? is Joe Thorne. I am short, Ang- balding, angry? and angry. Not balding. I'm just bald, bald. at this point. Uh, you got you this know what's, horseshoe thing going. Like you got this. Like I know. I didn't shave. I don't Why care. Didn't shave. Jimmy's pointing out. I got a big zit on my nose. He's pointing out that my hair looks bad because I, I didn't shave in a week. Well, yeah. It's just it's. With the sun behind you, with the light behind you, I know. You, you I've really got the can, I got the Costanza. I know. You got the Costanza, got the Costanza going on. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Um, people get us confused sometimes. They think that you're saying something when I'm saying something, and I'm saying something when you're saying something. I feel like we, we have pretty we sound, distinct yeah, voices. Definitely. Yeah. Like I'm I'm more deeper and manlier, and you're just kind of a whiny. No, baby. no, no. You sound more exotic, and more exotic? I sound more. Que fresco. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Yeah, this we've had like the nicest winter in. A, we've had some couple of mild winters up here in Chicago mm-hmm. land. Uh, January was amazing, and uh, I'm I'm feeling pretty good. I, I think we're ready for spring coming up soon. I think yeah. we're gonna have early spring. I'm digging it. What do you What are you doing over there? Nothing. I'm I'm talking to you. No, you're doing something on your computer. I'm not, I'm not talking to you. No, you got something. No, keep going. Look. What are you doing? Oh jeez. All I right, told you, that's my MacBook. It's this brand new MacBook with. Yeah. Extra dongles. Extra dongle. <laughs> Got a, I dongled it up. All right, what are we talking about today, Joe? Uh, well, we're going to talk about a conversation yeah. that uh, I have seen people get so upset over that they throw things and cry. Well, I think it, it, it's, it's definitely an emotional topic, don't you think? Like, it, it can be, yeah. Well, it can be. I think it, it, well, I think, especially for those people that are, concerned about it I, I do think there's a when you say it can be i don't know I, I feel like it should be for all you don't think so well yeah i mean look if we're talking bible and theology we sort of at some point need to disconnect the emotions and deal with what scripture says you can't long-term divorce your emotions from it you need to have that connection yeah. but too many people allow their emotions to dictate the direction of their theology especially when it's something as sensitive as this yeah. Now yeah. everybody already knows because it says it right there on the podcast yeah. that we're talking about infant salvation. Yeah. Um, now, why would infant salvation like infant salvation? That's a good thing. Saving the infants. Why would yeah. that be an emotional thing? Well, it's emotional because on one hand we're talking about the death of those who die in infancy, and infant salvation brings with it questions about damnation. Yeah. And so this is uh, a, a, an emotionally charged issue. And what we want to be able to do is explore this biblically and theologically and practically in a short amount of time. So we're we're going to try to solve this whole thing right Uh, now. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Bonus episode. Infant salvation. Bonus episode. Infant salvation. Boom. Let's do it. Go. Let's go. All right. Well, go ahead, Joe. What are we talking about? Well, give us in a nutshell. When we're, there's there's a question that arises. 
you know, we believe as, as Orthodox Protestants, you know, as Christians, we believe that a person must be saved by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That a person can only be reconciled to God by God's grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. Yeah. So people that don't believe in Christ are not saved. They are not forgiven of their sins. They are not reconciled to God. They do not have eternal life. They're not welcomed into paradise. If this is the case, then what do we do with those who die in infancy? Yeah. Or what do we do with those who have diminished mental capacity? Yes. And cannot yeah. exercise you have to, faith? Yeah, those have to be in hand in hand. Yeah. So, uh, so now we start to talk about well, okay, so what what happens if a person has does not have the mental capacity to exercise faith, or if someone dies before they have the mental capacity, um, are they condemned to hell, or is it an automatic pass to heaven because of their age? Mm-hmm. How do we make sense of this? That's really the the bottom line issue. Now, most Christians, the vast majority of Christians, would say what? I think most, the vast majority of Christians, I think, would say, by the grace of God, they will be saved. Yeah, they're going to heaven, right? Yeah. Now, is generally, this is not a, a biblically informed uh, position. It's just a position... Well, some would take it from, from David. All right, we'll get to that. Oh, oh sorry. Well, general, you said when it's not biblically informed. I said mo- for most people, okay, sorry, this is not you. a biblically informed position. All right. It is just kind of like, well, like how could you send a baby to hell and, yeah. and all of this? Yeah, how, what kind of a loving God would do such a right, thing? Right, so the vast majority uh, of Christians, I think, would say that, yeah, we, infants haven't done really anything wrong. Um, but there are others who would say that um, some who die in infancy go to hell, yeah, and some go to heaven. And like, are, are they thinking of like the sixteen eighty nine chapter ten? Read it, chapter ten, paragraph three. Elect, and this is the the chapter is on effectual calling. Paragraph three says this elect infants dying in infancy are regenerated and saved by Christ through the spirit who works when and where and how he pleases. So also are all elect persons who are incapable of being outwardly called by the ministry of the word. So it's that first part there elect infants. It's not saying it, it's a qualifier. It's not all infants. I don't read that there unless I'm, I'm reading it wrong. It's saying the elect infants. Yeah, so some would say that some are elect and some are not. Yeah. Others would say that all who die in infancy are elect infants. Yes. Because elect, like some would argue, well, an elect infant is the one who dies in infancy. Yes. So there's a couple of ways to take that. So some would say all go to heaven. Some would say some go to heaven, some go to hell, uh, and, and for different reasons. And some would say all go to hell, Yeah. which is nutty. I, I, yeah, I agree. I think that's that's and this is hard for me. Like like you're right about trying to detach emotions. That's kind of hard for me in the midst of that. Right, be a man, don't be a baby. Think. I'm thinking, but I have thought about that. You're you're already tearing up. You're already welling up. All right, stop. You are. You're You're like such a jerk. You're welling up. Hey, don't be a baby. No, you're gonna have another fight. We're gonna have a fight over this. I'm not gonna have the fight on air. I'm just saying. The reason we have the fight is because you're a baby. No, the reason why we have the fight is oil and water. Big jerk. Oil and water, or is it oil and vinegar? Wait a minute. Oh, that make us a salad dressing. Tasty. Ah, yeah. All right, go. All right. So, um, so first of all, let's deal with a couple of things. All right, go. Um, a lot of people, when they consider uh, children and death and salvation, they talk about something that's commonly called the age of accountability. Yes. And uh, the age seven of, years old. Yes. <laughs> age of accountability. It's this idea that well, until they are able to consciously make a choice that is sinful. They're not going to be held accountable for any sin. That's right. And therefore, they've got to pass to heaven. They're innocent until they are accountable. And that age happens at some point. It's different for every kid. You know, some people... Seven. Some people, maybe it's the seven. The Catholic Church would say seven. The problem with the, problem with the age of accountability is that um, it's only found in one verse in the whole Bible. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. It's found in no verse. I was say, the I was like, I, as soon as you said that, I was like, I'm interested to hear what verse he's talking about. You know, I don't remember that there. verse. It ain't in there. There ain't, there ain't no, there ain't no age of accountability in the Bible. Um, in fact, what we see in Scripture, uh oh, must these. I've had this cold all week long. Yep, here oh. it goes. Oh, it's being oh. such a baby, Joe. And it's I can't rub my nose because it'll make the zit bigger. Well, they ain't making that zit bigger. Isn't it, can't get any bigger. Oh my gosh, it's like a massive. second nose. All right. So what were we talking about? Age of accountability. Age there's accountability. no script. There's no, no passage that talks about it. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, well, let, let's start like this. All right. Um, there is no sense in which infants are presented as innocent in Scripture of, you know, before the face of God. Okay. Now, uh, they can be socially innocent or relatively innocent, um, but ultimately, every human being from the moment of conception on mm -hmm. is guilty before God for the sin credited to, the, to them and inherited by them from Adam. So, in Psalm uh, 51, verse 5, uh, there we get a clue into the, the, the stain and the culpability, the stain of sin and the culpability of man at the moment of conception. Uh, in sin did my mother conceive me. Yeah. Um, surely I was brought forth in iniquity. There is... Uh, and there's, there's another passage to consider. And I, like, people don't usually go this way, but l l let's try this. If, I'm going to open up the Bible here, esv.org. Mm. That's where I go. All right, and then I'm going to open up Romans 5. Okay, so. Right, Romans go, chapter Romans 5, 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, who are we talking about? Adam. Adam, right? So just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, mm -hmm. and so death spread to all men because all sinned. That one verse says a lot. So sin came into the world through one man, Adam, mm -hmm. and death through sin. And death has spread to all men because why? Because all sinned, past tense. Not because all sin. Mm -hmm. Death is not spread to all people because we all continue to sin. That's right. Death has spread to all men because we all sinned in the past with Adam in the garden. Yes. We are guilty as human beings before the face of God because of what Adam did. Yes. I don't know about you, Jimmy, but I, I tend to believe that human life begins at conception. I'm one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. I'm one of those wackos. You're one of those wackos. I, I actually think it's like a human being, the moment of conception. Yep. So uh, if you believe human beings are existing at the moment of conception, then you have to believe they're sinful. Because that's what, that's what Paul says. If they're human beings, they're in Adam, and they're condemned because they did what Adam did. And so without the hope of Christ, there is no hope. There is, right? yeah. So we are all condemned in Adam, or we are set free in Christ. We are yeah. either in the first Adam or the second Adam. Those are the only two options. There is yes. no middle ground. There's no innocent, like I'm kind of waiting until I can get old enough. And by the way, I've had four kids, and I've watched a bunch of others, and uh, they make conscious, sinful, selfish choices long before seven. Man, I, t I, totally, I began to understand and believe more about total depravity once I had a child. You ain't got to teach them to be bad. I never, I didn't teach them to be selfish. No, they're just that way. They're just I, exactly. gross. They're mean. They're just, they're, they're selfish. Like they're, they're evil. They're, they're bad. They're just like me. Kakos, <laughs> paneros. But what'd you say? <laughs> Greek term. All right. Um, yeah. So uh, here's the thing. I, there is no age of accountability. Yeah. We are all guilty. So now the question is, okay, if all of us are in Adam, as human beings, this yeah. begins at the moment of conception. We are guilty for what Adam did, condemned. That's what Romans 5 says. Yes. That's what Psalm 51 5 says. Yes. All right, then, how is it that, I mean, if they, the, can those who die in infancy exercise faith in Christ? I don't see how. I mean, I don't see that in Scripture where yeah. they can exercise faith in Christ. They don't have the mental capacity to yes. exercise faith in Christ. So I've heard people say, like, well, it can be a miracle that they exercise faith in Christ. Uh, yeah, I, think I feel like that's a stretch. Eh, I don't really see that. Yeah. I don't really see that. Um, now, I know John the Baptist leapt in, his, in the womb of his mother when, yeah. uh, when he got near Jesus. And they like, like, ooh, like, bloop, like something going on in there. Like, that was the noise. Like, that was the noise? In, in, in the womb. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Like, that's what it sounded like. And so people will point to that, like, okay, well, there you go. There's something going on there. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, but that, but that was that was not the norm, right? I would say there is there is one passage of scripture that for me makes a big difference in my understanding of infant salvation, and that is in Second Samuel twelve. Yeah, second uh, verses twenty two to twenty three. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you want me to read it, or do you want it? You gonna read it? Go, I can go please, no, please go for it. I just wanted to get there. Go, go. Okay. Uh, and so this is David. No, no, no. You got to back up before that. All right. What do you, what do you want me to do? Uh, Here, go ahead. You've got it right there. Right, yeah. You, you, you're starting too late. 
Why? I, no, I was gonna give a. I was gonna give context and then read the part. That's no. important. All right, so give the context. No, you go. Go. I don't want to steal your thunder. And the Lord afflicted the child that Uriah's wife bore to David, and he became sick. David therefore sought God on behalf of the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. And the elders of his house stood beside him to raise him from the ground, but he would not, nor did he eat food with them. On the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David were afraid to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spoke to him, and he did not listen to us. How then can we say to him that the child is dead? He may do himself some harm. But when David saw that his servants were whispering together, David understood that the child was dead. And David said to his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed, and anointed himself, and changed his clothes. Then he went into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. He then went to his own house, and when they asked, and when he asked, they set food before him, and he ate. Then his servant said to him, What is this thing that you have done? You fasted and wept for the child when he was alive, but when the child died, you arose and ate food. He said, While the child was still alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who knows whether the Lord will be gracious to me that my child may live. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, Mm -hmm. but he will not return to me. David, the moment his child died, his yeah. day, when his child was sick, he was mourning, fasting, praying, pleading. When his child died, he stopped, he got up. He essentially rested secure because he says, I shall go to him. Now, there are some people out there that want to go, that just means he's going to go to the grave. Yeah, yeah. But that's not an encouragement. That's not a reason to stop mourning. Yeah, that that's does, a reason. There, that's no a reason to put a bullet in your brain. You just lost your kid. There's no hope. He died. No, I, then I'm going to die. It's just Ecclesiastes yeah. without the fear of the Lord. No, he's saying I'm going to go to him. He's not going to come back to me, but I will go to him. I'm yeah. going to see him again. He's making a theological argument. Yeah. So clearly, we have a baby. I, I think it's pretty clear that baby went to heaven. I think so. Yeah, baby went to heaven. All right. How did David know? Did God whisper it in his ear? Mm. It doesn't say. No, no. Now, this is not the kind of doctrine that's super clear, like it's an easy doctrine, but yeah, there. how could he know unless it's a theology that instructs those who die in infancy yeah. are the elect of God? That's right. Those who die in infancy are elect infants. Not every infant is elect, but those who die in infancy are elect infants. Yeah. By the grace of God, foreordained, knowing before the world began, right, called these young ones. Why to is himself. that kid sick? The Lord afflicted the, the child. Lord afflicted it. Yep. And God is sovereign all the way through this. That's right. So, this, it's a whole complicated thing with, with the sovereignty of God exactly. and all of that. But um, I think we can say pretty fairly that when David's child died. He was certain that his child went to heaven yeah, or to paradise, not just to Sheol, not just to the grave, but that he went to paradise and he would see him again and there would be rejoicing. I believe he knew that, and I could be wrong in this. I could totally be wrong. I believe he knew that because that's his basic theology and he is put here as an example is clearly he is put here not he's, he's he, we have this here so that we can learn something about how david thinks about the lord yeah so my conclusion in all of this is that those who die in infancy or those with diminished mental capacity who cannot believe in christ are elect now i don't think they're elect because they are dying in infancy. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're elect because they have diminished mental capacity. I think they are elect who happen to have those things. In other words, I think think the death or the affliction is ultimately a part of the plan that comes after the choice to choose. Okay, I see what you're saying. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but this is my view. And so... Well, wait a minute. Does the child exercise faith in Christ? I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. know how that would work, but I don't. We don't have all the answers, but we got to have. We got to. You got to draw some kind of. Got to draw something. Well, yeah, yeah. And I'm keep trying to think through in my head, like old covenant, new covenant. How does this all play in together? Right. Like 
does David, and I'm asking questions out loud, right? Like, does David have this hope because of his understanding of Israel as God's elect? Well, I think David understood that not everyone who is a part of Israel was a part of Israel. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think it goes beyond that. David understood that... um, that he was conceived in sin and that he needed a savior, that God uh, is not won over by our acts of service or worship, but that we receive him through a humble and contrite spirit, um, that it's saved, that we're saved by grace alone. Um, so I don't, I, I think he, I think David is informed by his theology, yes, but I think David's theology of the old covenant was a proper understanding that, wow, you know what? Under this particular covenant, how we obey determines how we are uh, ultimately blessed in mm-hmm. this life. But my relationship with God does not work that way. My relationship with God is based on grace alone. So I, I, I think it's important to say we don't, like, this is not an easy doctrine. I think the doctrine of election is a lot easier than this particular aspect of it. I think this gets confusing and even confounding. But the reason it's important to, to work through this stuff is because you will be interacting with people in your churches yeah. who have diminished mental capacities or who die in infancy. Now, we've got a small church. We're only 10 years old. We have not only had miscarriages, which are painful enough for those who have to go through that, we have had people uh, give birth to stillborn children, yeah. and we have had those children who died one week and two weeks and three weeks after birth. Now, we live in a middle to upper middle class, comfortable, suburban community. Yeah. And we're seeing this in a church of 200. Now, in other cities and in other cultures and other countries, the death rate of children is much higher. It's fair to say that you're going to have to interact with this. Now, what do you say to the child who lost their brother? What do you say to the mother or the father who lost their child. What do you say to them? Because they want to know. They want to hear something. And our temptation is, I'm going to say anything that makes them feel better. Yeah, yeah. I just, like, I just don't want to be the bearer of bad news. How do you hold out the gospel of hope? How do you hold out the grace of God without lying or without misrepresenting the truth? I don't ever want to be the guy who says what he says because it's convenient or easy. That's right. What I think we can say is that with confidence, and I say, and I've had to say this over and over and over again, because I've asked, people have asked, I've held, I've held dead infants in my arms. And I've been asked, where is my son? My answer is, I believe your son is in paradise. We have, I have every reason to believe that you will see your son again or your daughter again because David had hoped that he would see his child again. Yeah. It's God's grace alone. Make no mistake. Your child was a sinner just like you are. He got that from you. But God's grace that overcame your sin overcame his sin or her sin. And I believe that that child is among the elect and you will go to them and you will know them in the fullness of that relationship uh, in the future. And I I, I think I could say that biblically. It's possible that I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's where I land. What about you, Jimmy? Ditto. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what else to say. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'm trying to think through a few things, but uh, yeah, I absolutely agree with you 110%. So when we're talking about like doctrines like this that yeah. aren't as, um, like this is a hard one. It is hard. It, emotionally? You're, you're, you're really, yeah, it's emotional. That's the one aspect of it. But I think the other part is that it's not like there's a lot of verses. Not a lot kind of information. Of, we're, we're kind of like looking at, right. at our our... One, an understanding of the character of God and the grace and mercy of God and a verse. Right. Right? Like, and I, I mean, Piper, like Piper wrote a whole thing, or he had a whole thing about it. Not a whole thing, but he, there's Just a half a, thing. A half thing. Okay. Uh, where he looks at it on Romans 1, mm-hmm. 19 through 20. And that's kind of where, where he 
uh, bases. Actually, uh, I'll just read. He goes, I base my belief that God does not condemn babies who die on Romans 1, 19 through 20. Uh, and this is what it says. For what can be known about God is plain to them, that is to mankind, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. Therefore, they are without excuse. And he said it's the therefore at the end that says that mankind would seem to have an excuse if they had not, uh, if they had not seeing clearly in nature what God is like. And so because I don't think little babies can process nature and make conclusions about God's grace, glory, or justice, it seems that they would fall into the category of still having an excuse. Let me tell you why Pepper's wrong. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right. Number one, it doesn't say that that is the only reason somebody would be without excuse. Okay. That is one of the reasons we are without excuse, that we have seen God and we in creation and we have rejected it. The, the general revelation. Right? Okay. So that is one of the reasons we are uh, not okay. without excuse. Um, that sounds like age of accountability. You think this sounds like of age of accountability? Of course it does. They haven't been able to see and reason. Once they can see and reason, then, they're, then they are without excuse. And it sounds to me like... Uh, a missed opportunity to understand Romans 5 that they, listen, uh, are we guilty for what happened in the garden? Yes or no? Uh, he says yes at the beginning of this. But not condemned for it. Uh, he says babies are participants in original sin. Yeah, but they're not going to be condemned for it. Uh, he says the question is whether God has a way to cover their sin even before they have a chance to believe. Babies are not mentally able to put faith in Jesus yet, at least not in any terms that we ordinarily understand. And so I think that God provides another way to cover their sin. Yeah. So but again, we're, we're dealing with this issue of, well, they're without excuse. They, 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 they are, they have an excuse. Because I think that's kind of what he is saying. He's saying they have an excuse because they haven't been able to see. It's yeah. I would say that is that's what age he of is saying. I think he is. It seems they would fall into the category of still having an excuse. That's that's what. Yeah. Paper so wrote. so because they don't have the mental capacity yet, mm -hmm. that is their excuse, and therefore those sins are easier. To, I mean, to forgive, like the original sin. Listen, the original sin is we're guilty for it and we're condemned for it. We're damned in Adam. Uh -huh. We're freed in Jesus. That's why I disagree. We're damned in Adam. We're freed in Jesus. Now Piper and I are going to land in the same place. Those no, who no. die in infancy are saved. Yeah. But I disagree. I, I think you're disagreeing on how he got there. Yeah. But this is that whole complex situation here that we're that we're right. facing is, uh, again, it's one on an understanding of the grace, mercy and love of God. And really very, very limited, little, very, little. very limited verses to go to, because, yes, so, I would agree. I would be going to second Samuel myself and say, that's my only hope right. is that. But then I also, like I asked that question of, well, is there a difference between, you know, old covenant, new covenant? But then I also then bring in my Presbyterian, you know, try to figure that, okay, well, that, are, it, does that like help solve that situation? You know what I mean? Like, does that help answer that question? I don't know. I'm just Well, it would only be, if, if that was the issue, it would only be the, uh, the, the children of believers who are then saved. Yeah. If that was going to be applied. But um, all of this gets to this, this big issue here of charity. Yes. In our theological dialogue, right? Yes. So I like to make fun of like, I'll tell you why Pepper's wrong, son, because yeah. he's brilliant and I'm not. Yeah, yeah I mean, regular, Dr. Regular. Piper is just yeah. a hack. DP. Yeah. Dr. He, Pepper. He's, yeah, he's just a hack to joke. Um, so for real, like, uh, how do we handle, like, how are we supposed to approach these kinds of doctrines yeah. when there isn't a lot of information? And then how do we handle the discourse? Yeah, and I think I think like you said with charity, I think one it hand open, right? Like part of me, the emotional side of me wants to hold on to Second Samuel twelve and not let go, and like just get upset and emotional uh, against those that say that all babies are going to hell, right? Uh, but I. I think the way Joe has always said, there's been a lot of podcasts where, where Joe has shared his thoughts and he ends it. He ends it the same way. Joe does it all the time is, but I could be wrong. And I think that is how we need to enter into these things is we, we don't have a lot to hold on to. So we could be wrong. I don't think we are. I really don't think we are. I'm not wrong. Joe's an idiot. 
but I think that uh, I think we're right. So we want to be we want to be charitable, yes, and careful, careful, We've and be, willing to learn more and to engage right. this. Oh, in I'll tell a you what, hospitable way. I've I've held different views on infant salvation. Have you really? Have oh, you? Yeah, in Bible college, did you really? Oh, that big time! Me. I made girls cry. Oh, Joe, oh, really? Man. Like, girl, I had girls get so mad they'd slam their trays down with food and drinks on it and walk I would have thrown it at you. Oh, because you're a little girl. No, it's not you're that. Like because I, I know you. I know you. You try to be a jerk. You try to push buttons. And that's no, a, I don't. That's a terrible no, I don't. button to push. I push the truth button, son. No, that's a, that's truth a, button. But apparently that wasn't true. Oh, I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it wasn't the truth button. I was the error button on that. The yeah. It was, it was just. Uh, I was hitting was the jerk error. button and I was hitting the error button. You were in cage stage. Oh, I was such a jerk, dude. Yeah, oh, you were in cage gosh. stage, arrogant, I was so Calvinist. awful. Yeah. Oh. So anyways, yeah, That's I would have thrown story for another you. time. Um, yeah, no, I believed in uh, elect infants and non-elect infants that some died and went to hell and some didn't based on the mysterious will of God. Yeah. Because okay. in my mind, I couldn't get past, well, if all are elect who die in infancy, then the fact that they die in infancy is the cause of their election and it's no longer unconditional. Um, and I was unwilling to consider that it could potentially be the opposite and I wasn't really seeing that. Yeah, yeah. And just be and, and hold a mystery. And how did David know and all of that? So I've I've had, I've held different views. And again, I, I I could be wrong. We could all be wrong on this stuff. Yeah. But let's let the word of God be true. Maybe all are saved. All in Christ? I'm just throwing words out there. Okay, Rob Bell. <laughs> you be Rob Rob Bell. You're like you're like you're like one of those guys. I am not a yeah I'm not no a you're not as good. He's he's a good speaker. He's, yeah, he is actually. I know. I know. I'm no. just saying. Yeah. Here's the thing. All right. Now he's what he's trying to do. What? Joe is trying to act like uh, he's trying to what? Po- paint me into a corner to say that I'm trying to I support Rob Bell or Stephen Furtick. I didn't mention Stephen Furtick. No, because we've had this conversation. I don't agree with those gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as doctrine or their faith or their belief. Okay. So you know they like Jesus. You're not about Jesus, apparently. What I don't or what I do. You saying Furtick doesn't believe them. in Jesus? What I do appreciate about them is I think that they are fantastic communicators. Whether what they are communicating is wrong, I agree with. I'm I sure think Furtick has uh, awesome triceps. Have you seen his triceps? But no Trinity. No, he, he believes in the Trinity. All right. He's not a oneness guy. He's not a oneness guy? Why are you calling him a heretic? Oh, oh, why are you oh, doing that man. to me? Oh, man, dang. Here we go. Hashtag Fofo Heretic Hunter. No, don't do that. Hashtag Fofo Heretic Hunter. <laughs> He believes in the Trinity. He's so mean. <laughs> All right, guys. So listen, um, it's a touchy issue. It's an emotional one. But it is. We, we do have and to I learn, on the one hand, to kind of allow emotion to sit out part of the yeah. study so that we cannot be overly influenced by it. But then you've got to let it back in because yes. if you don't do that, then you don't know how to talk to people. You don't know how to shepherd people. You don't know right. how you to just empathize. Joe, as Joe, the jerk going, in Bible college. That's exactly it. It's no help to your congregation at all. No help to your spouse right. at all who, who might be, or a family member. It's if you're, you got to have heart, man. If you got no heart, you shouldn't even be in ministry. That's true. That's true. Well, thanks for listening in, guys. We have a um, conference coming up March 11th. We Get want, on it. We want you guys to register for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Go to, uh, what is it, doctrineanddevotion.com slash conference. Register. Get all the goodies. Uh, it's going to be a really good time. We're going to hang out some kind of a, if you like to hang out, it'll probably be a cigar. I can pretty much guarantee if you don't like cigars, then you're not going to want to hang, hang out with us. Because that's where we go. We go to a place where you can smoke cigars. But it's going to be a lot of fun. And people, other people will be hanging out with no cigars, so you can do that with them. It's going to be a good time, so go and check that out. Big thanks to Justin Bond of J Bond Media, uh, if you, the audio visual wizard of Doctrine and Devotion. If you've got any audio visual photography needs, head on over to jbondmedia.com and he will hook you up. You could follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Doc and Devo and on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head on over to iTunes and leave us an honest five star review or whatever your podcast provider is. You can head on over to the website doctrinedevotion.com, click on the contact us page, give us your thoughts your suggestions, your critiques. You can also click on the sign up page where you can sign up for our email list where we only, uh, where we will be sending some special content just for our email subscribers. Fresh pod every Monday and Thursday blog post every Wednesday and special content during the week for our email subscribers. Hashtag Fofo Heresy Hunter. Later. Later.